Let us move to the next question. Question number 99 on industrial drives and control. Okay. Let us solve the questions on industrial drives and control. Question number 99 says the frequent starting and stopping of electric motor is required in the applications we have to say. Which application? First option, paper mills. Second option, air conditioners. Third option, grinding mills. Fourth option, lifts and hoists. Okay. Frequent starting and stopping of motor is called as jogging. Okay. That jogging, where jogging is required, it's not required in paper mills. Okay. Paper mills, the motors will be running continuously. In air conditioners also. So jogging is not required. In grinding mills also, in grinding also, there is no frequent starting and stopping of motor. No jogging is required. But then lifts and hoist, there should be a jogging. Jogging means frequent starting and stopping of motor. Okay, if you are in the first floor, you need to go down. You have to push push the down button, lift goes there, and again lift has to come up. Again, uh, it has to go up. Like that, frequently the motor will be starting and stopping. In the hoists also, hoists are, hoists are used in the industrial cranes uh, in order to move the body or the object or a machine to be installed or uh, it has to be assembled or moved from here to there. They will use hoists. Hoists will be having the push buttons and uh, that jogging can be achieved by using the uh, jogging push buttons in the hoists. So, which is the answer? The frequent starting and stopping of electric motor is required in lifts and hoists. Fourth option is the right answer for the 99th question. Let us move to the next question. Next. Let us move to the next question, question number 100. Which of the following motors is used for elevators? First option, synchronous motor. Second option, three phase induction motor. Third option, capacitor start single phase induction motor. Fourth option, DC series motor. Okay. See, if you consider the synchronous motor, synchronous motors are the motors where the rotor rotates with synchronous speed. Where we need the speed and position control, we will use synchronous motor. For the elevators, speed and position control is not required much. So, we don't use the synchronous motor. So, first option is not the right answer. Next, capacitor start single phase induction motors. These are usually our fan motor, ceiling fan motor or table fan motors. So, there in the fans, we will use, we will use capacitor start the single phase induction motor. 3 phase induction motor and DC series motor. See, 3 phase induction motors are the uh, motors, their speed can be controlled by uh, using variable frequency drives. Okay, and DC series motors, these are the, uh, you can give an example permanent magnetic synchronous motor. You can give, uh, these will be having a high starting torque and speed varies as per the mechanical load. So, elevator requires these characteristics. Okay. It should be uh, controlled by variable frequency drives. It can be controlled by very variable frequency drives. Three phase induction motor can be, speed can be controlled by variable frequency drives. As we know, Ns is equal to 120F by P. P, P, is, the, P is constant, F is variable. The F is, can be varied, then speed will be varied. This frequency we can vary with variable frequency drives. Okay, and the DC series motors, these will be having the high starting torque. It is required for the elevators. Speed varies as per the mechanical load for the elevator, that is also required. For the elevators, there should be a speed, uh, speed control should be there, and uh, it should have high starting torque, and it should uh, uh, the speed should vary as per the mechanical load. So for elevators, we can use both of these motors, see three phase induction motor as well as DC series motor. So, second option and the fourth option, both are the right answer for this question. Let us move on to the next question on industrial drives and control. Question number 166 says, which of the following motors are best for rolling wheels? First one, single phase motors, second option, scroll cage induction motor. Third option, slip ring induction motor. Fourth option, DC motors. The answer for this question is option number four, 
DC motors. Why DC motors? These DC motors, particularly DC series motors, will be having high starting torque and variable speed. So, since they have these characteristics, we can use them in the applications such as heavy duty applications like uh, locomotives, steel rolling, rolling wheels, hoists, lifts. In all these applications, these DC motors can be used. So, the motors which are best for rolling wheels are DC motors since they have high starting, starting torque and variable speed. Next, question number 167. 167 says, in a paper wheel where constant speed is required, the preferred drive is, see the option, first one, first option, synchronous motor drive, second option, individual drive, third option, AC motor drives, fourth option, group drives. Uh, where we need a constant speed, we will usually use individual drives. Okay. The paper mill also needs a constant speed. Uh, the requirement for the paper mill is a constant speed. So it uses individual drives. Synchronous motor drive is not required. AC motor drives are not required. And group drives are not required for the constant speed application. So option two, individual drive is the right answer. Now let us solve the questions on energy management. Question number 133. It says dash is not a greenhouse gas. First option, methane. Second option, ozone. Third option, oxygen. Fourth option, carbon dioxide. The answer for this question is oxygen. Third option, oxygen is the right answer. Because if you look at the major greenhouse gases by chart, methane has 17%. Uh, other gases have 11.9% and nitrogen, nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide has 6%, fluorinated gases of 0.8% uh, and uh, major greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide with 64.3%, oxygen is not there in the, uh, this pie chart, major greenhouse gas pie chart, so oxygen is the right answer and uh, ozone falls under this other gases. Let us solve the question number 134 on energy management, which says, which of the following is more energy efficient? They have given four options, four bulbs. Among them, we have to find which is more energy efficient bulb. First option, incandescent bulb. Second option, CFM. Third option, fluorescent tube light. Fourth option, LED. Okay. It's an easy, easy task to uh, find out which is the more uh, energy efficient bulb. Truly, uh, LED is the more energy efficient bulb. LED is the more energy efficient bulb. Fourth option is the right answer. How? See the, see the chart over here. Bulb against lumens per watt. Incand incandescent bulb will produce 10 to 70 lumens per watt. Fluorescent bulb produces 40 to 70 lumens per watt. CFL produces 63 lumens per watt. LED produces 90 to 112 lumens per watt, okay, which is more over here. 90 to 1 per right. So LED is the right answer. What is lumen? Lumen is the SI unit of luminous flux. It's the amount of light emitted per second in unit uh, in solid unit solid angle of one steradian. It is the amount of light emitted per second in a unit solid angle of one steradian. Steradi steradian is the unit SI unit of solid angle. Lumen is the SI unit of luminous flux. So LED is having the most lumens per watt. So LED is the right answer. Let us solve the next question. The question number 148 on energy management. It says energy efficient motors have four options they has given. First option high power factor. Second option, high noise. Third option, high operating temperature. Fourth option, high vibration. The answer for this question is high power factor. Okay. If you want the efficiency of a motor should be more, there should be a high power factor. So energy efficient motors have 
high power factor. They don't have high noise, they don't have high operating temperature and high vibration. They have high power factor. First option is the right answer. 